Now that we've learned about self-attention and the transformer encoder, we are ready to look at the complete transformer architecture and study the transformer decoder. The material on the decoder is separated into three videos. In this video, which is the first of these three videos, we describe how the transformer decoder works during testing and training. The ideas explained here are then used in the next video to explain one of the main components in the decoder, where a mask is introduced to enable us to train the network more efficiently. Here is an illustration of the complete transformer architecture, where we have the encoder to the left and the decoder to the right. I don't expect you to understand all the details right now, but you may recall that the two main components in the encoder are the multi-head self-attention layer and the feed-forward layer. Similarly, the main components in the decoder are also multi-head self-attention layers and a feed-forward layer. However, as you can see, the decoder actually contains two self-attention layers, and these layers are also modified slightly compared to the one in the encoder. The first multi-head self-attention layer is called a masked multi-head self-attention layer. And this layer is described in the second video. The second multi-head self-attention layer takes two different inputs, both the vectors that we've computed in the earlier layers of the decoder and the output from the encoder. And we describe the details of this layer in the third video. Apart from this, the decoder stacks capital N decoder blocks after each other, just like we did in the encoder. And finally, we pass the output through a linear layer and a softmax to compute probabilities. In this video, we will focus on how the transformer is used during testing and training, since this will enable us to understand the IDs behind the masked self-attention layers. Let us first look at how the decoder can be used for translation during testing. That is, suppose that we have already trained the decoder and now want to use it for translation. As an example, imagine that we've been asked to translate the sentence Tengo un coche, from Spanish to English. In this case, the sentence I have a car would be an excellent translation and I will refer to this as the target sentence. Of course, the network would not have access to the target sentence and to produce a translation using the network, we would instead repeat the following steps. First, apart from feeding the Spanish input sentence into the encoder, we also feed the part of the English sentence that we have already translated into the decoder, here denoted as output sequence. Second, we compute probabilities of the next word. And third, we use these probabilities to select the next word in our translation, either by sampling a word or by picking the word with the highest probability. Note that the third step is not performed by the network. Let us look at how this might work in this example. When translating the first word, we haven't actually translated anything but we then feed a start of sequence token into the decoder, here denoted SOS. Perhaps the network then predicts that the first word of the sentence is I with probability 0.85, the with probability 0.1, and that the probabilities of other words are 0.05 in total. In that case, we are likely to select I as the first word in our translation. Once we have selected I as the first word, we can feed that into the decoder and ask the decoder to predict the probabilities of the next word. In this case, perhaps it predicts the next word to be have with probability 0.75, such that we are likely to select have as the next word in our translation. If we select have as the next word, we can then feed I have into the decoder and again ask it to predict the probabilities of the next word. By repeating this process, we can translate one word at a time. If things go well, 
we might end up producing the correct translation, I have a car. And then finally predict the end of sequence token, which marks that the translation is completed. So, this is how the decoder can be used to translate sentences once we have trained it. However, it's important to note that we feed whatever translation that the network gives us back into the decoder. For instance, if we were to start our translation with the words you had, this is what we would feed into the decoder, even if the correct translation is something else, since the correct translation is generally unknown to us. We have seen how the decoder can be used for translation once we have trained it. In order to train the decoder, we assume that we have access to correct translations for a number of different sequences. In terms of pair of a sequence of words in the original language and the corresponding translation. Of course, hopefully we have many such pairs of sequences. This is now a supervised learning problem and we generally try to maximize how accurately the decoder can perform translations on this annotated data. We specifically look at one word predictions and evaluate performance using the cross entropy laws. That is, we feed one of the original sequences into the encoder, for instance, tengo un coche, and we feed some part of the target sequence into the decoder, for instance, I have a. The network then computes the probabilities of the next word in the translation. These probabilities can then be compared with the next word in the target translation, in this case, car, and we can use this to compute the cross entropy loss. As usual, we select the network parameters by minimizing the cross entropy loss, which means that we maximize the probability of the next word in the target sequence. In our example, this means that we want the probability of car to be even larger, since this is the next word in the target sequence. Two things are important to note here. First, that the translation that we feed into the decoder is determined by the target sequence and it doesn't depend on the translations that our network produces. This is commonly known as teacher forcing, motivated by the fact that we force the input to the decoder to be the correct translation. Second, according to this description, we would perform a lot of calculations just to predict the probabilities of a single word. As we will see in the next video, the transformer decoder makes use of masked self-attention to enable us to parallelize some of these calculations and speed up training. For completeness, I'd like to end this video with an expression for the loss that we would like to minimize. Unfortunately, this requires us to introduce some additional notation that we only use on this slide. In particular, the letters X and Y are often used to denote other quantities in these videos, but I here use X for the input sequence and Y for the output sequence, since this is the standard notation in supervised learning. So, let the input sequence in the original language be denoted X1 to XNX, where NX is the length of the sequence. Similarly, y1 to yny is the corresponding translation, where ny is the length of the translation. We also use superscript parenthesis j to index the different pairs of input-output sequences, and we let m denote the total number of translated sequences that we have access to. As usual, we seek network parameters that minimize the total loss across our training data. To compute this loss, we should sum over all the different sequences, that is, over j from 1 to m, and for each pair of sequences, we compute the cross entropy loss, or the negative log likelihood, for our predictions of word i in the translated sentence. Note that when we compute the probabilities of word i, we condition on the entire input sequence, x1 to xnx, as well as the earlier parts of the translated sequence, that is, y1 to yi-1, 
since this is what the network has access to when predicting the next word. Finally, we also note that we would like to be able to predict all words in the translated sentence, which is why we need to sum over all values of i. Since i equal 1 corresponds to the start of sequence token, we start the summation with i equal 2. Based on what we've presented above, it appears that we would have to compute these probabilities one word at a time, and that we would need to run the decoder one time for every word in the output sequence. As we will see shortly, we can design the decoder to enable us to compute all the one-step prediction probabilities in parallel.